Hello friends, in my series on building a Tauri app using Rust and React, I got a question from a user. Why did you not use fetch directly to call an API? I thought to address this question in this video. The Tauri app is uh, using the Tauri app. There are two major or important component. One is the UI component layer, and another one is core or backend. The UI layer you can build using any web technology, what you are comfortable with. Mostly, you can use HTML, CSS, or vanilla JS, or you can use any framework, UI framework, for example, React, Svelte, or Angular. In my series, I have used React to build my UI component. But in the backend, you must need to use Rust to develop your backend functionality. Here, there is a slight confusion. Whenever we are talking about API, so we always meant the API is hosted in a web server, or it, it is a REST based web service which can be created in the backend. But one important aspect to remember here is that Tauri app is meant to build desktop application. The application which can be run in using your desktop, for example, Mac OS, Chrome, or sorry, Linux or Windows. So it can work completely offline. Even though you don't have any internet connection, then also your Tauri app will work as it is. Even though this particular UI component layer is work or run in the browser engine but it doesn't need an internet connection to be your application to be functional that is a major benefit of a desktop application but saying that it doesn't stop you for making any internet connection or to pay some data if you need to make some uh, external web services so if you consider in a point of web or you know desktop application the Rust backend is the core component or the backend layer which is responsible for interacting with your file system or if you have any local database for example SQL DB or embedded DB that you can embed it inside your desktop application to store some data or you can store the data in a simple JSON file. So all the Rust can have that control about the file system and to manage with the data and your frontend layer build up on the React will deal with the UI component, for example, that uh, buttons, input box, and so on. But the important aspect is that like, how this UI layer and the React application will interact with each other. If you see this in the past, there are various UI desktop applications built using .NET, Java, and there are a myriad of technology. So usually they are built using single process methodology or they usually share a common set, you know, RAM memory to have the set memory. But in case of Tauri, the architecture is designed as a multi-process architecture because your UI component will, will, will run in a single process and your Rust backend will run in a different process. So you can have a different multiple process, for example, notification or tray icon and so on. So that core component will orchestrate between various processes. If you use multiple processes, there are various benefits to it. If you see this Chrome browser or Electron application, they also use multiple process methodology. So which will make, if one particular component fail, so it is not going to impact very adversely into the other layer. For example, if the Rust backend fail for some reason, and in the Tauri framework will take some time to restart that Rust component and bring it to speed. But at the, at the same time, your entire application won't get crashed. So the user can able to see some UI, but that uh, but they won't get the, all the data at that moment. They have to click the buttons several times to get the connectivity again. But the, your entire application won't get crashed. So that is the benefit of multiple process uh, process application. And the multiple application uh, application has significant benefit in terms of running multiple core process. Now the, nowadays our laptop or our desktop becomes so much advanced that it has multiple core, multiple processor. So this kind of multiple process architecture will leverage 
and take the maximum utilization of various advancement of hardware technology. So your application will learn very fast and it feels very responsible, responsible, responsive to the user interaction. But now coming to the question of uh, the user, why the React component not use fetch? Why do you use invoke? So to understand that, the so React component can co call fetch to a different web service which is hosted into a different web server. That may be serverless web server or running in some container or some Apache engine. To make any web service call apart from this laptop to the something outside through internet, you can still use fetch to make a web service call. So this is where I highlighted if you want to go from this particular crumb to the internet outside. But this dotted line, if you see it is a, your boundary the, of your application which is, a, which is deployed into a in your PC or in inside your laptop. So it is not connected with internet. You, there is no need for you to connect to the internet. Then how this uh, React application will integrate with the Rust backend. So this is API is little bit, uh, you know, API stands for application program and interface. Usually whenever we talk about API, we always think it is a REST based API, but that is not exactly true. We can create set of methods inside the inside the desktop application also and we can, can call it API. So whether you call it is API or a function, whatever maybe you can call. Rust backend provides some kind of functionality that you may call API or you may call as a function, but that is not hosted in a web server. So that is part of a process. So internally it is running inside by Tauri is managing how it can, you know, uh, execute that particular application. In this case, internally, internally it is like Tokyo runtime to make sure that, uh, you know, the uh, Rust process is running and active whenever the React is trying to consume. But it is not uh, hosted in the internet. You don't need to host it some other place is Rust backend service. So it is come as a package. And this uh, React as well as uh, Rust backend is talk with each other using IPC. IPC stands for Inter Process Communication. That is a very old age technology or convention what is used for communicating between different processes. If you see in your laptop, you have multiple processes like your taskbar, your wallpaper, you have start menu. So different processes has interact with each other using IPC. And also to communicate between these two things, this Rust using like uh, oh, uh, talk about, we can talk about like uh, different convention. Maybe they decided to use a text file to communicate with each other. They can decide to communicate via XML. But Tauri decided to make the communication using JSON format or JSON RPC, the protocol name similar to JSON RPC. RPC stands for Remote Process, uh, Remote Procedure Call. That is a, another protocol which is very common, where you, you, which can any client and any server can communicate via a remote process call. But this is this is not remotely hosted. But it is similar to that. So both will discuss with them by passing the JSON body to each other. And one more important difference is that whenever it is making invoke call, invoke call is not a synchronous call, whereas page call is a synchronous. This invoke is a asynchronous call. Let me explain the difference. Whenever like your React call make a call to a internet based REST API, then this REST API needs to be available at the same time when you are making a fetch call. If you are not available, then immediately it will throw an error or connection timeout. So you won't get result. But whenever this invoke call, you, I did a small queue mechanism. So whenever this invoke call happened, the rust at that time may crash or it may be busy with processing some other request. So it, it is the, the rust backend, you can't visualize it but it, because it is so much uh, embedded inside it, but under the hood, Tauri use a async mechanism so that this uh, React will drop a message into a queue and uh, Re Rust, whenever it is available, it will pick the message and process it. So even though let's say Rust is uh, pending or crashed, so it is bootstrapping again, so your message won't be lost. But let's say for some uh, five minutes your web service is down, so you'll immediately get a uh, error. So this it is a client responsibility to call it again and again.
but the, during this invoke so once you call it you don't need to employ this re retry mechanism so this uh, whenever this rust is available so it will process this message so so that, that's why the, this invoke and page are slightly different with each other and this rust can use some another http library and can make a call to a internet outside that is also possible so you can directly <laughs> So sorry. So you can directly make a call from React to this internet via fetch, or you can use some hyper or some different library to call from Rust to the external internet. But to communication between these two, one mechanism is to trigger by this React, call an info function, and return some response from Rust. So this pattern is known as command pattern. In this command, like there is a macro available, I'll show you in a second. So where <laughs> where uh, react component will trigger a call and get the response easily and so this uh, tauri will take care about serializing and deserializing the components and in the rust side we are using saturday and here because it is a json so json by javascript itself is more comfortable with json so we know don't need a third party library to convert from java object to the json structure but inside rust we have to use some third party create known as Sardi to do some conversion from this uh, JSON, whatever we receive from React to the Rust structure and vice versa. Now, let me show you how this code looks like. This is like left hand side is the React or TypeScript component. There is nothing specific with the React code here. It is you can think of the vanilla JS or the TypeScript. It will look all same. And this side is the Rust side, okay? And these two are the data model of the Rust side. And this is the TypeScript model. Let me explain one by one. So here, this is the function name, get name, get item. <coughs> so we take three argument like table name. Partition key, sort key, and it return a option of type item. So if you see this attribute, this attribute. So uh, here debug make this, this this is the macro. Will provide some additional functionality on top of that. So we have to decide define this deserialize and serialize macro. Uh, whenever we are receiving the request for example attribute we are receiving as a function argument right so in this calling function we are uh, supplying this table name partition key and sort key so whenever it will receive it will receive as a json structure so from this javascript object <laughs> so this invoke will convert to a json structure and it will receive as a json uh, it will receive here and whenever this Tokyo will encounter this message, JSON message, with the help of deserialize, it will convert the JSON to, you know, Rust to struct, this attribute. That is not a deserialize process. So whatever the argument you supply, you have to mark this as a deserialize. And as for this uh, uh, convention of... Uh, and here we are using partition key underscore and partition keys is the uppercase. So this automatically the translation will convert, take care of it. But if in case, if you are in the item, for example, whenever we are editing item, here also we make a struct. In this case, we have to make serialize. Serialize means converting from this rush struct type to the JSON structure. The conversion of rush to the JSON is known as serialize. So whatever you are returning, make sure that you have to make serialize it is. And there is no requirement for making it to deserialize if you are not taking that as an input argument. But let's say this is the in the rush side, the property is like partition key followed by underscore. But JavaScript, the convention is to use camel case. So that if you have to mention some additional attribute like set the rename all, like camel case. So this is the call. And inside this body, you can do all the transformation. Maybe you can get this input parameter, call to a you know embedded database like SQLite, 
or or read some JSON file system or some text file and do some processing and construct this item and send it back. So this communication will happen through this invoke function. And in this React side, we have to import this invoke library from Tauri Apps API and call this invoke function. And this is the async function. That's why we are putting await. And in this, uh, as a first argument, we have to put this function name, like get item should be same. And in the uh, parameter, we should give the same parameter what this is expecting in the Rush side. And also just for the convenience sake, you can define these types. This is not required or mandatory, but in, you can define item structure so that same as partition key, short key attributes, so that you can use TypeScript inside your program, which will make your code more. You can go auto complete in, into the thing and some other benefits into the TypeScript using the TypeScript. So this is in a nutshell, like how we can communicate between uh, React and uh, Rush. And I'll show you some example here. This is a get items. I think the function I called here is the list items. I'm using some different name. List items. This is a Tauri command. This you have to specify so that it will make that uh, uh, react and uh, rush to communicate with each other. And here we have only one argument, a return a collection of item and we do the custom processing here. So this particular function is async because if you are calling a async function uh, inside a program, you can make it a async or if you are not making any async call inside your function body, so you can make it sync also. There is no need for putting it async if you are calling a simple, you know, simple operation. <laughs> and see, this, there are two examples I given. If you are trying to call any website, like for example, this is one uh, JSON placer dot to do application I got from internet. So if you are calling a simple fetch API, so you can use fetch. This is to make the rest particular component to call to a UI layer. So you got the response and convert to JSON and make it await and get the to do's and print it. So this is like API call, which need to internet needs to be available and that web service should be, this API should be available at the time. But if you are making a rush call, so you can use invoke here, like await invoke, the function rush function name and the parameter and the result. At this moment, this is embedded inside your particular application. You, th there is no need for internet connectivity. So it is, can work in the offline mode as well. And this is a async operation. Even though the rush backend is crashed for some time, your program won't fail. It will put a message into a, a queue and rush to, Tauri will pick whenever this rush to backend is available again. But this is a synchronous operation. If there is internet is down or this website is down, this will fail immediately. Uh, this is the application I'm building. So I'll give an example. I put some screenshot here, like to do application and items. I'll show you. So once I click it, let me clear it, uh, everything. So once I click it, this get items will be called, the first to do's will be called, then items. So I'll show you two things. One is the logging and let me clear this network tab. See, once I call this network tab, I got the data and it is rendered. But if you notice over here network tab, there is only one call here. This is a call to the JSON placeholder API. So what we call from this page API, that is what is going to the internet. And if you see in the console, I got two to do's as well as items. But for if you see these items, I have not got any network call because that is not a internet call. That is a inter-process communication. Both are located into the same laptop, 
same communication happen internally from process to process communication but this particular to do thing is called to the internet so we got the data here and these items we got from the rust backend and this we got from the external rest api so hope you learned something from today have a good day ahead bye bye